So this is a video I meant to make a long time ago, but I finally got a spare TV that should work. But I said I wanted to start a series a long time ago that would be based around stuff I get from thrift stores. And I would show you guys, you know, everything about them, take them apart. If it's electronic, I would take it apart, try to repair it if it's broken, things like that. And the first video I wanted to start off with was my Commodore 64. I got this for $45.99. Yes, my house is a mess. Ignore the bandage. My son likes to dump random boxes. I got this for $45.99 from a store called Volunteers of America in Ohio, here in Ohio, Northeast Ohio, and was just blown away when I saw it for the price. And I wanted to go over the packaging with you, open it up, show you guys everything that came with it, and go from there, if I could get it open. So keep in mind also, this is the very first time I'm doing a video like this. Give, give me a chance here. <laughs> So we're going to open this up. The box is in mediocre shape, but as you open up and see it, you see just how good of shape this thing is really in. There's a button back here that's a modded button that's something that's not factory, but has the original styrofoam, the original boxing here, power supply and bubble wrap and video cords are all in here. Let's get this thing out of here. Come on. Let's hope I don't break anything while I'm doing this. So as you can see, if you can see inside there, there's a little red wire that's soldered to a specific point on the cartridge port. Or that's cartridges, I'm sorry. On the expansion slot, I believe. I don't know much about Commodore 64s, but I want to learn now that I have one. I don't know what that's for. Ooh. My next video is going to be going over something that uses those plugs as a display output. Um, anyway, so this is how it looks from the back. We're going to get the styrofoam off of here. And that's the whole Commodore. Here's the back of it. Very clean, in fantastic shape. The original serial number, model number, um, void warranty. Yeah, that's kind of useless now. In fairly good shape. So I'm going to put this aside here. And we'll go over what else is in the box. Give me one sec. Like I said, you guys know me. I don't edit my videos. Um, let's get what's in here out. Actually, I'm probably going to have to edit this video. So that's power. Got it. Throw that to the side. Um, let's see what this is rated electronically. Indoor use only. Doesn't say anything like the text. Oh, power supply. C6460 Hertz, 117 volt input, 40 watts output, 5 volt DC, 9 volt VAC. Damn. Then there's some other cables in here. These are display cables. I don't know why there's four. Yellow should be display, white should be sound, red should be sound. I don't know what black is. The other side here is a cable I actually needed and I did not know was in this box. So I'm going to be actually doing my other video needing that cable. Uh, let's see what else is in here. Don't know what you're for. Cool. And finally, ah, if you guys are as old as me or older, the RF modulator. So this would allow you to um, connect up old consoles to a TV and do channel 3 or channel 4. Classic hardware right there. So that's all for what's in that box. Now we get to what's in here. Now this is something that's really cool. 
I want to hide some info up here. But this is the original purchase receipt from 19, I want to say that's 83. The original purchase receipt from 1983 by a guy named Jeff Cunningham. I'm trying to hide his information, but I don't think I did too well. The original price of 199 um, something else, class something 68.88 came to 267.88 plus tax 283.96. I don't know the math for inflation, but I'm sure one of y'all smart asses will put it in my comments section. That's awesome. Here's some other information about the Commodore. This is your important warranty information that has been voided for... A very long time, seeing as it was only for 90 days. Yep. Is there a date on here anywhere? There's not. Actually, I'll just leave this stuff in here. And then this is how to get internet on your Commodore, I believe. How to get more from your Commodore computer. Pretty badass. And then this yellow paper is something very cool. Whoever the original owner of this was, was goddamn smart. So like, light pen algorithm with some math and some shapes. Like, this guy, the original owner of this thing was insane so here's some original code that the original owner wrote there's 70 lines of code i think written here i don't know i don't exactly know how this is done up but there's a bunch of code here on a4 paper rather than our eight and a half by 11 and so far that's it for what's in the box i'm going to turn this off real quick uh, plug in the Commodore 64 and then we're going to find out if it actually works because I was told it works. I have not plugged it in myself, so I'll be back. All right, guys, I'm back. I got it all hooked up. We're going to see if it works. This TV kind of sucks, so I'm going to blame the TV if it doesn't. The power and stuff is actually here on the side. I did not notice. So we're going to hit the power switch. I do not have any controllers, but from what I know, you can actually hook up Sega Genesis controllers and they will work. You just got to figure out what buttons do what. It's on. It's on. Nothing. Now, it could be my TV. I'll admit that. Or it could be the display output that I'm using. Hold on. I don't know how this TV works. It kind of sucks. Oops. All right. And still no signal. So I'm going to try hooking up a different cable um, because it seems like this does not give display output so I have it all plugged in back here and what I believe is correct except for this black cable so what I'm gonna do is pull the yellow and plug in the black real quick here and then source fuck TV sucks. And let's hope. Still on that shit. AV. No signal. Give me one second, guys. 
All right, I grabbed a different cable. Let's try this again. I plugged in the little one. It's on. Still nothing. So I gotta figure out how to get video output on this thing. But other than that, still a very cool find. This means there will be, I know it's making sound because when I wiggle this thing, it buzzes on the TV. It could also be that like I have nothing plugged in as far as a drive or any discs. I know nothing about the Commodore 64. I don't know what it takes to get it running. If you can just turn it on and go. I don't know any of that kind of information. So as far as that is concerned, I think this video is going to require a part two. I could be wrong, but I don't know. This video may require a part two. We'll figure it out in the future, but for now, no signal. Part two will probably consist of me taking this thing apart, figuring out what's modded about it, and figuring out why there's no display output. Because again, this is from like 1983. There could be something going on with it we don't know about. And that's just as good as it's going to get. The next video I make will either be taking this thing apart if I can figure out how to mount a camera above me to actually do so, or it will be, you know, a gaming related, game modding related video, or it'll be a video of either that guy over in the corner. Sorry about the mess. Still haven't unpacked or organized anything. Or it'll be what I picked up today, which is a very cool computer as well. A lot of this stuff is going to be computer based except for a few things. But hope you guys enjoyed the video. I want to try to take the channel in a new direction. I want to try to do more hands-on videos with you guys and figure it out from there. So take this as the pilot. Expect an episode two or a continuation of this video where we actually dig inside of this Commodore 64, try to fix it, get my soldering station out and get to my isopropyl alcohol, some flux off get the components all nice and sparkly clean, looking brand new, and learn how to use this thing together. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll talk to you later. Peace out.